With the sudden announcement of Season 4, we have a last minute update to our 3v3 tier list so that you can push as high as possible in these last few weeks. Anyway, let's get right into starting with the S tier. Surprise, surprise, Demon Hunter is still really good, and DH Boomy has continued its reign as one of the best ladder comps. Right now, Preservation Evoker is the healer of choice due to its amazing offensive support and healing output. Evokers are able to pump out the HPS needed to keep Boomkins aggressive, allowing them to land Cyclones while the DH just trucks everyone down. And as an additional synergy, Innervate pairs perfectly with Stasis. Evokers tend to spend a lot of mana to ramp their burst heals with this cooldown, but with Innervate, they can basically save 20% of their mana bar. In any case, despite its nerfs after the AWC, DH Boomy is still a fantastic ladder comp, and there is a reason why these two specs are everywhere on the leaderboards. A slight variation of DH Boomy is just to swap out the Druid with an Ellie Shaman. This comp ditches the offensive control of Cyclone in favor of a more attrition-based playstyle. The main weakness of Ellie Shaman by itself is that it doesn't really have the ability to close out games alone, but the moment you toss a DH into the mix, suddenly you get a win condition thanks to Metamorphosis. So with incredible consistent damage and with either the offensive support of an Evoker or the healing wall of a Resto Druid, this comp is definitely S-tier. Outlaw Rogue is basically a substitute for Demon Hunter and can slot into the exact same comps. Both Outlaw Boomy and Outlaw Ellie are great options, sacrificing a bit of consistent damage for more overall control. c Do's Outlaw Boomy came in second during the latest AWC, and if it wasn't for bug DH damage, his team could have outright won the tournament with this comp. Outlaw also continues to be a staple in RMX, which can be played with any mage spec after recent buffs to Fire and Frost. As far as healers are concerned, Holy Priest or Resto Druids tend to work the best. Shocker, right? In a tale as old as time, Rogue Mage has lasted into another meta as a high tier comp. Right now, consistent damage is so high across the board, and this comp continues to excel at slowing the pace down, using their control kits to avoid damage while finding small windows to reverse pressure. If you play Mage, then an Outlaw Rogue is going to be your best bet for tackling the end of season meta. Subs is definitely a good option too, but more on that later. Now, what comes as a complete surprise is how dominant a Feral Druid comp has been in Season 3. Feral Devastation of Ochre Fistweaver has become an exceptionally strong setup. As a pseudo-caster, Ferals can help bait out kicks, allowing their Evoker free reign to slam damage. And if the Evoker is the one getting shut down, that gives the Feral more flexibility to land Cyclones, leading to a double threat of CC and damage. The damage threat offered by both DPS is what allows the Fistweaver to be left free, since the enemy team is usually too busy just staying alive. With the top end of the meta sorted, let's move down to the A tiers. Here, we have a bunch of comps that are really strong individually, but have unfavorable matchups into many of the S tiers. Not to worry though, because that's exactly why Skillcapped exists in the first place. We literally have thousands of arena commentaries available on demand that teach you winning strategies for your hardest matchups. These videos will teach you everything, including how to change your talents in each matchup, and unique tips and tricks directly from the minds of rank 1 players and even BlizzCon champions. Skillcap members can even submit one free VOD review a month, where an expert player will review their footage and provide personalized advice. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started with an exclusive discount offer and get the rating you've always wanted. Anyway, back to the video. First up on the A tier is one of the most pervasive comps on the North American ladder, Ret Warrior. Seriously, just tune into any Twitch stream playing 3v3 and there's a 50% chance you will see this comp on the enemy team. Right now, the healer of choice is Fistweaver Monk. Normally, Fistweavers suffer from tanking CC chains and being vulnerable to swaps due to the nature of their healing kits. But with the defensive support of a Ret Paladin and Arms Warrior, Monks have way more uptime thanks to mechanics like Blessing of Sanctuary and Berserker Shout. This allows them to keep up with damage and healing, steamrolling any caster in the process. For a late season grind, this comp is a great option and is an execution test for many other high tiers. Next up is a newly developing comp that has done really well on EU. Assassination Rogues can pair up with either a Destruction or Affliction Warlock for two different flavors of RLP. Affliction Warlocks encourage a playstyle revolving around AoE damage, with the Acer Rogue dotting all three targets. Destro, on the other hand, plays more off the strength of setups, where Kingsbane becomes the primary win condition for the Acer Rogue. Holy Paladin is the most common healer for this comp at the highest ratings, but it could likely work just as well with other classes. In either case, Rogue Lock seems to do exceptionally well into other caster melee comps and could catch many players off guard due to its low popularity. And if you are a Destro Warlock who hates rogues for some reason, then Destro DH is still a great choice. This, of course, was the comp to win the Season 3 AWC, only to be hit with a few key nerfs immediately after because apparently DH damage was a bit bugged. 
Both Destro and DH are still doing exceptionally great damage, and the key here is to play with an aggressive healer like Resto Shaman or Preservation of Ochre to overwhelm opponents. Again, we're playing in a meta where the goal is to just spam damage and press W, so pairing with offensive healers seems to be the play. Speaking of pressing W and spamming damage, we have yet another Demon Hunter comp, but this time putting Unholy Death Knight on the board with DKDH. Although Unholy DKs have fallen in strength multiple times this expansion, this classic melee cleave combo does a really great job at harassing enemy casters. Where the DH will do most of the heavy lifting when it comes to damage, with the DK playing more of a Scotty Pippen role, assisting with disruption when needed, doing crazy early game pressure with 3 minute cooldowns, and then doing 1 minute setups with stun strangulate combos. Next up is Jungle Cleave, which is likely the best overall option for survival and marks hunters. Despite its historical significance as a top tier comp, jungle is much harder these days. The Feral Druid playstyle revolves around landing cyclones, and without a devastation of ochre around to soak kicks, ferals become a more vulnerable target. In any case, this comp is built around its familiar win condition, combining CC chains with high consistent damage to win the war of attrition. Another familiar comp that has fallen off these days is Sub RMP. With the buff to health pools, nerfs to CC, and every healer getting a 90 second PvP trinket, the value of setups has gone down significantly. In any case, playing with a Fire or Frost Mage is probably your best bet, especially considering both specs were recently buffed. On paper, this comp can have a fighting chance against some of the high tiers, with Demon Hunters and Devastation of Ochres being notoriously great targets for RMP. Moving on, we have a Windwalker comp that also uses a Sub Rogue, something that you might have seen in the most recent AWC. This comp plays off the strengths of both specs, having explosive setups that combine high burst damage with insane control. The appeal of playing with a sub rogue and holy priest is that it gives the monk the lockdown needed to get full value out of serenity. This comp will 3-2-1 CC setups to ensure the monk can absolutely obliterate health bars, all while having plenty of defensive cooldowns to extend the game to fish for more setups. With our high tiers out of the way, let's move on to some B tier comps which include some familiar faces. First up is Turbo Cleave, played with a Fist Weaver Monk. You can think of Turbo Cleave as a budget version of Ret Warrior, where the entire goal of both DPS is to allow their Fist Weaver to punch. Blessing of Sanctuary is swapped out for Tremor Totem, which will be better in some matchups, but is overall worse since stun removal is so strong in a high damage meta. In any case, if you play Enhancement Shaman, Turbo is by far your best bet, just like it's been for the past 10 years. For any Shadow Priests out there, you have two classic comp options, the first being Shadow Play with a Destro Warlock. As far as your healer is concerned, Holy Paladin is a great choice overall. Shadow Priests benefit from having strong external cooldowns coming from their healer, which is why Paladin can provide excellent coverage. Offensively, Paladin opens up the ability to do actual setups with your team. But if you prefer a more dampening based playstyle, then a Resto Druid will also do the trick. Alternatively, RPS is another strong option. Any fans of the move already know how good this comp can be in the hands of three great players. In order to succeed as RPS, you really need to manage tempo, snowballing pressure with CC chains in order to constantly stay ahead. But as you might have seen in the recent AWC, Shadow Priests can easily get bullied by melee cleaves. Having to deal with multiple melee kicks can be frustrating and makes it way harder to gain momentum. In any case, if you're looking to play a comp with a high skill floor in the current meta, then RPS is a great choice for you. Next up is Demo Warlock, who have the same staple comp in the late season. Demo, MLD, and LSD are likely your best options overall, though we should warn you that both of these comps are prone to having very long games. As a Demo Warlock, it's hard to finish games quickly since you don't really have any high impact CDs, and to be clear, Tyrant is not high impact. Instead, your win condition when playing either of these comps is to draw games out and gradually win in dampening. This is a stoic path to victory, so be prepared for some very long 3v3 sessions. Sticking on the theme of pet classes, we have two BM Hunter comps. Playing with a Ret Paladin or Unholy DK is likely your best bet, ideally throwing in an offensive healer into the mix. Both of these comps play into the standard Hunter win condition, consistently landing traps and extending CC chains whenever possible, all while doing high persistent pressure. The main difference between both comps are the damage profiles, with Ret having a much stronger damage spike during wings, while DK relies more on mini bursts every 45 seconds. The last spec we will cover on the B tier is Augmentation Evoker, whose best comp is the same as Devastation. Once again, playing with a Feral Druid and Fist Weaver Monk is your best bet. This was a very common setup during the peak of Augmentation in Season 2 and is still quite competitive in Arena despite Augmentation getting numerous nerfs. Once again, the appeal of playing with a Feral Druid is that at least one person is guaranteed to be left free. If the Evoker gets trained, it means the Feral can land more clones, and if the Feral gets trained, it means the Evoker can have much higher uptime on Ebon Might. Both DPS can also support their Fist Weaver, whose damage and healing will also be buffed by Ebon Might. 
Anyway, now we've reached the bottom of our list with the remaining C tier comps. First up, we have the classic Draco Cleave, with Frost DK and Devastation Evoker paired with Mistweaver Monk or Holy Priest. Now, of course, this comp is incredibly deadly, having one of the craziest one minute setups in the game that has the potential to absolutely obliterate enemy teams. The reason we're putting this comp on the C tier is because that's really all it has going for it. Outside of its one minute setup, it can really struggle to find wins and tends to just get overrun by teams who can trade efficiently into its setups. So despite having a crazy burst window, Draco Cleave is just too gimmicky to reach the high tiers. Finally, we have our remaining DPS spec, Fury Warrior, whose best option is likely just Ret Warrior. Right now, Fury is simply considered the budget version of ARMS, having less utility and more unreliable healing reduction in favor of a slightly stronger burst window. In any case, the strength of this comp is identical to the ARMS Warrior version, as both DPS have strong defensive utility for their Fist Weaver, allowing their healer to have maximum uptime, all while tunneling down some poor caster DPS. Right now, the meta in 3v3 is a bit weird. With Solo Shuffle being the primary game mode, Arena is becoming more and more like Mythic Plus, where being able to maximize damage and harass enemy players with micro CC is what it takes to win. A lot of the comps we've covered today play into those strengths, and as you might have noticed, aggressive healers are trending up. Now more than ever, doing big damage is what it takes to climb in 3v3 Arena. So if you find yourself stuck or you want the best shot at conquering the meta, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We will be updating damage courses for Season 4, teaching you everything from the fundamentals to min-maxing tips, all with one goal in mind, to make sure you can hit your rating goals. If you're stuck on any matchup, we've even got thousands of arena commentaries available right now. Every Skillcap member even gets premium Discord perks, including access to our Ask a Pro channel, where you can get personalized help from an expert player. And for a limited time, members even get one free VOD review per month, which is one of the fastest ways to improve. Everything is backed by a rating game guarantee, where we promise you will rank up while using our guides. So what are you waiting for? Get the rating you've always wanted by visiting the links below. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.